In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to read the vector scope YUV graph in the Lumetri scopes panel. So to bring that open, just click the wrench icon, check on vector scope YUV, or go to presets and choose vector scope YUV. You'll notice that if you have one of these other ones open, and then you also check on another one, both of those are going to be open. So make sure you check the other ones off so you get a good full reading of this, full view of this. This is one of those more advanced lessons for those of you taking the full Premiere Pro course. So if this one's a little too advanced for you, go ahead and skip it. It's not completely necessary, but it will up your color correction game. Now with this graph open, if I scrub through my timeline, go from no clip to this bright 4K color correction, example clip, you'll notice that we have this splash of white dots all over this graph. If I go to another clip of mine, here we see that it looks different. What this is showing is where, what colors are in our frame and how saturated they are. It has nothing to do with exposure, which we saw with the waveform graph before. This is all about color saturation and we use this to make sure that our colors look good. They are not too oversaturated, especially if we're going to be broadcasting our footage onto TV or exporting for Netflix or something like that. Uh, this is definitely important. And also, this can actually help you perfect your skin tones, which is super important. And I'll be covering that specifically in another tutorial. To really show what this is doing, go to the new item button and click bars and tone. This is going to, and then click OK. This is going to give you a clip of color bars and tone. This is good for broadcast signal sometimes, depending if you're exporting a video or a film for a, a film festival or things like that. You They might ask you to put bars and tones at the beginning of your, your footage. They Generally, this was required a uh, decade ago, definitely. Um, now, not so much, but it's good to know where this is. And it also is good because it has perfect colors that appear here in this panel now. You'll notice that the little dots fall perfectly in these little boxes. And we have boxes for all of our colors. Red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. And then all the rest of the colors fall somewhere in between or around these hues. We also have two boxes, one small and one big one. The smaller box and this bounding line that we see connecting this box is the broadcast safe box. We do not want our colors to be over this line if we're sending to a broadcast signal. And typically just in general because it likely means that it's oversaturated and not a natural looking film or video, unless you're going for that crazy look. If I go to my basic color correction and I decrease the saturation or increase it, you can see actually with increasing it, it's not gonna do anything because these colors are already fully saturated at 100. But when we decrease it, all those colors go down towards the center to zero saturation, which is basically black and white. If I hop over to this clip right here, we still have a lot of colors in this clip, especially compared to those other talking head clips that I showed you before. We can see a wide range of clips and we can see some of these clips are going a little bit oversaturated from this line. So how we would use this graph is, okay, now we know that we're a little oversaturated and that might be because I used a vibrant sort of preset in my camera to, to really bring out these colors. But for video and broadcast safe levels, we might need to bring these down just a little bit. Now that brings everything down. So you might be saying, how can I bring just the blues down? Well, we've learned a few tools that we can do, use to do this. We can take our curves panel, go down to our hue versus saturation. This is where we can use the color picker, if you remember from that lesson, to select the blue and then bring down just the saturation of the blues. And you can see it happening over there in the Lumetri Scopes panel. Maybe extend this just a little bit. And here we can just go in and find all of our specific colors 
and maybe bring down the ones that are a little bit oversaturated, leaving the ones that are not as saturated. And this will give you a little bit better of a broadcast safe range for those specific colors. I'm gonna turn that off and go down to our HSL secondary. So this is the panel we've used before to change colors. This one you can also pick very precise colors and bring down the saturation as well. Now I haven't adjusted the selection of this, so it's a little, it's not perfect, but bring down the saturation here is gonna bring, again, bring down the saturation of that cyan, that, that blue color. And if we extend our saturation just a little bit, and when I do that, you can see that it's selecting or showing just that color on our Lumetri scope as well. So again, there's multiple ways to do things in Premiere Pro, but that's one of the main reasons you would want to use this vector scope graph. Now, one last quick note about reading this that's important is while these boxes are for perfect red, magenta, blue, etc., I don't want you to be looking at your footage and say, okay, well, my red needs to be exactly in this box. It's actually interesting that the red of this car falls pretty much precisely in this, this range of, or this hue of red. So that is perfect red, but the yellow is not perfect. And so this doesn't mean that I should try to adjust the colors of my footage to get this yellow into this yellow box because what's in your footage naturally might not be perfect yellow. That being said, there might be a time where you do have something in your footage you know is a specific color and that's when you can use reading this and your correction to correct it to, to get to be the, same, the right color. Now, the other thing that's powerful about this tool is this line right here, which is actually the skin tone line. It is where all skin tones should lie. And I'll show you how to do that in a tutorial next, but no matter what, it actually looks at the blood running through skin. So no matter what your skin tone is, using this line, you should be able to get perfect skin tones. That's coming up in the next lesson, but thanks for watching this one.